Hi everyone and welcome to Tansa's Talk, the world's only English language program focusing primarily on Hungarian folk music. My name, as always, is Kalman Magyar Öcsi, and I'm coming to you today not from Toronto, but from Naples, Florida, where I am down here for a few weeks. Why, you ask? Why not? Just look at my tan and wonder. Um, you will miss the beautiful artwork, of course, uh, uh, usually behind me, Meg O'Hara, the uh, daughter of one of my partners, Will O'Hara, Meg's beautiful artwork with the water and the moon. It's becoming quite a part of the show. Beautiful background. Um, I will say, though, if you're listening to this episode by audio only, if you have the option to switch to watching it on YouTube, you should stop listening only now and watch it on YouTube instead. This is because today's episode is best ingested visually. There's a white board behind me, which I will talk about momentarily. And I'll be using that white board to give an overview about the regions of Hungarian music and dance, what they are, where they are, and how they fit together. And of course, there will be some music to amplify it all. Luckily, though, because I'm in Naples, I'm able to invite for the first time onto the show a live guest. His name is Tanz Haz Tyler. Tyler is from Florida, so that's why he's able to join us from Naples. And why is he called Tyler? Well, he is quite American. He knows nothing at all about Hungarian dance, music, Tanz Haz, any of that. Um, He's actually not that well informed of a person as you'll come to see uh, or hear. Now, if you're listening to this um, or watching this and your name happens to be Tyler, don't take any of this personally and just pretend I'm using another super American name starting with a T like, uh, you know, Turner, Tucker, Tyrone, Travis, something like that. Um, I, I figured using someone like Tyler. Um, uh, would be good as a vehicle through which to unpack this kind of content, uh, which is kind of visual um, and and uh, um, might even be fun for me as well as maybe for you, hopefully. And I'm just going to mix it up a little during today's episode. And of course, having access to the whiteboard here in Naples is a great tool to present this material with. And if you're listening only, you should note that Tyler is a creation of my imagination. There is actually no person called Tyler. It's my voice. My voice impressions are so great. I don't want you to be needlessly fooled. And my final disclaimer is about Tyler's accent. You'll you'll hear him. Uh, it should not be taken as an indictment of that style of speaking. I'm just using it because candidly, it's the only uh, American non-Hungarian accent I can use to distinguish Tyler's voice from my own. All right, let's get on with it. This episode is called Explaining Regions to Tansas Tyler. And to kick it off, I'd like to welcome Tyler to the show. Hi, Tyler. Hi, doing? Nice to meet y'all. Uh, uh, where uh, do you live, Tyler? Well, I, I live in Florida, uh, kind of, you know, Florida, they say the, 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 the more north you go, the more southern you get. So anyway, I'm from up, uh, I'm up north, uh, north Florida. I won't tell you where I don't, if this, I go, if this goes viral and I get famous people, I don't want people to, uh, to find me. All right. Well, um, Tyler, nice to meet you. My name is Kalman Magyar. Uh, wait, 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 say that again, Kalman Magyar, or they can call me Kalman Magyar, or you just call me Cal. All right, Carl. No, no, not Carl. It's Cal. Right, Carl. Cal, like Cal, Calvin? No, not like Calvin. It's like Kalman. Anyway, um, you can just call me Cal, or you just call me whatever. I've been called all kinds of things. So um, today's episode, Tyler is um, my opportunity to show you the regions of Hungary. Uh, Hungary? Where is that? Is that near 
Turkey. Um, uh, no, Tyler. Well, kind of. I mean, it's in the range of, of Turkey. Um, how about how about Egypt? I heard of Egypt. No, 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 Egypt. No. Oh boy, you are geographically challenged. You know, uh, Tyler, we got to hit the whiteboard right away here. Um, I'm going to back up a little, and um, I'm going to kind of draw Europe very basically. Hold on a second. Now, one of the things you got to know, Tyler, and people watching, that um, nothing I show is to scale, right? Obviously. Um, so this is very, very rough depiction. Uh, let's go this way here. Of, uh, of, of, of Europe. So if you see that down there, uh, boy, that looks a little weird. That's supposed to be the boot of Italy right here. So anyway, um, here's Spain. And you've heard of Spain? Yeah, I heard of Spain, no problem. All right. France, I heard of France. Germany, yeah, there's West Germany and East Germany. No, not anymore, Tyler. You're, you're dating yourself here. Anyway, uh, it's Italy, yeah, Italy, I heard of Italy. And um, as we kind of get into, now we're getting closer to Hungary. Where do you think Hungary is, Tyler? Well, uh, maybe it's over here. Nope, nope, that's wrong. That's the United Kingdom. United Kingdom, that's like many countries inside one, right? Exactly, Tyler. So, um, let's get closer to Hungary. Let me show you where it is, you ready? Austria or Australia, Tyler? Mm, I'm gonna go with Austria. Good, good guess. <laughs> it was a guess. And here is Hungary, right next to Austria. And then next to Aus uh, Hungary is a country called Romania. Have you heard of that? Not really, sorry. All right, well, that's good because it's going to be very important to our presentation today. So, Hungary and Romania. Now, just so you know, there are other countries as well around Hungary. So, let me show them to you as well. There's a place called Slovenia. Croatia, Croatia and Serbia. They're to the south or under Hungary. And as we go around, then there's then there's Romania. And next to Romania is Russia. Ra kind of, Tyler. Used to be the Soviet Union. Now this place called Ukraine. Nah, Ukraine. They got a nice festival. I hear it in Bloor West Village. That's true. And then there's Slovakia as well, uh, right north of Hungary. Okay, you following along? And you might have heard a place called Poland. That's there too. And now I don't want to give you too many countries because I, I think you're already be uh, uh, just a bit confused. But uh, now you know uh, where Hungary is in relation to some of the more famous European countries. Any questions so far, Tyler? Yeah, I got a question. Uh, how many states does Hungary have? Well, Tyler, that's an interesting question. Opa, the whiteboard is going to give on me here. I'm just going to erase that. And hopefully this will still work. Yeah. So. Tyler, the answer to that question is zero. Hungary does not have um, any states. It has counties, um, and so does Romania, but they really don't have states like we have here. Okay? All right. I understand. Um, now, interesting, you mentioned state, though. Just so you know how big Hungary is, Hungary is around the same size as Indiana. Have you heard of Indiana? I have heard of Indiana, home of the Indianapolis Colts. That is right, Tyler. Um, and, and it's also the same size roughly as Portugal, which is right next to Spain, which I didn't show you where that was, but 
Portugal is roughly the same size as well. Um, how many people live in Hungary? Uh, another great question, Tyler. Uh, 10 million, around the same uh, amount of people that live in Michigan, uh, the state of Michigan. Um, now, Romania, which is next, right next to Hungary, I showed you before, um, is, is bigger. It's about the size of Oregon, um, the, 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 the state of Oregon in the U.S. Um, and there are about 20 million people living in Romania, so roughly double the size of Hungary. Now, how many, uh, how many, Carl, let's Cal, all right, Carl, how many Hungarians live in Romania? Well, it's an interesting question. Um, Hungarians are a huge uh, uh, minority within Romania. Um, it used to be much more, but now uh, about 1.2 million Hungarians, likely more than that, um, live in Romania. So that's a pretty significant portion of the population. Okay, I follow you so far. Thank you for that extra information. Um, now, the reason why so many Hungarians live in Romania is because um, that the territory of a certain part of Romania used to be a part of the Kingdom of Hungary before World War I. You understand? Yeah, I, don't, I forget who, who fought in the World War I. Well, one of, the, one of the countries fighting was a country that no longer exists. It's called Austria-Hungary. Maybe I sh remember I showed you Austria and I showed you Hungary as well. So um, there's, there's a, there's a hung Austria-Hungary was a country that lost during World War I. And as a result of that loss, um, the winning countries kind of agreed in a treaty called the Treaty of Trianon to um, separate Hungary and make it, it was much bigger, and make it small enough. And this here is Hungary today, okay? Goes around like that. And then to the right, or to the east of that, what, I, what I'm showing you is a place called Transylvania. Um, oh, I heard of Transylvania. Is that where Dracula's from? Yes, the, the, the story of Dracula is from Transylvania. Um, uh, that's where that's where it's from. And um, Transylvania is is um, it sounds like Pennsylvania, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds like Pennsylvania to me. Go Steelers, right? So Transylvania is different than Pennsylvania, um, but uh, Sylvania means the woods. So um, uh, they're somewhat similar there. But in any event, Tyler. What I want you to keep in mind here is that this is Hungary and then here we have, it's called Transylvania and, and it's a part of Romania today, but Romania is much bigger, it goes behind me as well if you're watching and uh, uh, um, you can see that. Okay, so far so good. I'm really proud of Tyler for hanging in there and trying to make the best of, uh, of, of, of his understanding, even though he is quite geographically challenged. Now, there are, in Hungarian folk music and folk dance, three big regions. I'll call them macro regions. Um, so I will give you the names now, and then we will talk about each one, okay? You know what, I don't like this red pen will go purple Duna or Danube wow what what is the what's the Danube or the Duna what are you talking about well it's a good question Tyler that is the river that's the name of the river that's going down here. I will show you. It starts in Germany, actually, and it goes all the way uh, into Hungary and goes down here, and it keeps going down. Uh, it's a humongous uh, river, and then that's how it flows. So that's called the Danube um, River, or in Hungarian, they call it Duna, D-U-N-A. 
and that is the whole territory that they call the pr pretty much around the Danube River and to the west of it, okay? So to the left of it. And then here, the second region, big region, is called Tisa. T-I-S-Z-A. Why do they call it Tisa? Well, Tisa's a river that flows around here. I didn't want to muck up the drawing too much here, but it's, it flows around here. It's also a pretty significant river, and that's called the Tisa region, all right? Now, Tyler, if you've been paying attention, you are going to know what the third region, there's only third region, three big macro regions. Micro, no, no, macro, macro. What is this one called? Hmm? Uh, Sylvain, Pennsylvania. Wrong, Tyler. It's called Transylvania. And what country is that in, uh, in, in within today's border, Tyler? Uh, Romaine. Ah, close. Romania. So I'm going to write Transylvania here. All right? And the Hungarians call that Transylvania, they call it Erde. Okay? E R D E with an accent L Y. Okay? I'll do that again here. Okay, so that's Transylvania. That's Erde in Hungarian. Alright? So, Tyler, you're doing a great job hanging in there so far with this a lot of information you're learning. So, um, just to clarify or just to sum or to regroup here, there are three big regions in Hungarian folk dance and folk music. The first is called the Duna, that's the the west of of today's Hungarian border. So the west part of Hungary, today's Hungary. And then Tisa, which is the east side or the right side here as you're looking. And then Transylvania, which is in Romania. Got it? Got it. Is the show over yet? No, the show is kind of just starting because we now we're going to talk about um, little mini regions or maybe even villages of, of, of which have become very important um, in the Hungarian folk dance and folk music scene, okay, um, within these uh, these regions. But before I, I, I and let's start with the Duna. And um, the first thing I want to do is is the, uh, about the Duna region is show you, show you where the other countries around Hungary are, just so you have a frame of reference here, okay, Tyler. All right, if you say so, boss. I like this Tyler kid, he's a good egg. All right, so. AUS, Australia. Wrong, Tyler. We did this before, Austria. Okay, got it. And to the north of Hungary, that says Slovakia. Yeah, exactly. Now, I don't want you to confuse that one with a very similar sounding country that's to the south. E, uh, south, ooh, I'm southwest. It's called Slovenia. Aha, uh -huh. got it, Slovenia. Uh, that's not the same as Slovakia? Not at all, actually. Um, it's quite different. Okay, Slovenia, and right next to Slovenia, is Croatia, right? And then next to Croatia, is Serbia. Now you have to know that Hungarians live still 
in all of these countries. Um, lots in Serbia, lots in Slovakia, some Croatia, some Slovenia. I don't think, no, I don't really think anymore in, in, in Austria. But these are the surrounding countries so far. Now, what you might uh, remember a country, ever hear of a country called Yugoslavia. Yeah, I heard of Yugoslavia. So those, this guy called uh, Tito Jackson used to run that country. Not, not Tito Jackson, just Tito, he was called. Um, but anyway, Slovenia, Croatia, and Serbia used to be a part of Yugoslavia. And that was taken apart in the, the country no longer exists since the 1990s. Um, I will show one more country, as you might remember, up here is Ukraine. Very good. And of course we have Romania here. So these are the borders, bordering countries around Hungary, now that you can see them. And now, remember we're talking about the Duna region, and within the Duna region, I was going to show you some um, interesting little uh, sub-regions, right? So, we're listening to music from all the way up there. This is called Rabokus. Listen to this a little and w tell me what you think, Tyler. I gotta tell you, Carl, I, I've never heard anything like that before. What What's that groove? What is that? Well, that's called the Chardash. That's the national dance of Hungary, Tyler. That's a good question. Very insightful. I can see your brain cells are firing away. That is the national dance of Hungary. It's a couple's dance, um, and uh, there are multiple styles of it, depending on what region you're in, uh, or even a sub-region you're in. And this is from uh, Rabokus. So I'll show you another region, um, and I, I needed to explain what this big kind of, well, it's a lake, and, and um, what that's doing there. It's always an important frame of reference when you look at a Hungarian map, and that is um, Central Europe's biggest lake, and it's called, I have no idea. All right, that's called the Balaton. So, that's a very famous place, a beautiful big lake, vacation spot, um, and everything kind of under Balaton or to the south of Balaton, um, you know, we call, there's a, there's a nice region here called Shomoj, Shomoj is down there as well, um, and, uh, and, um, we also have, let's see, well, there are multiple regions we can show you, but I'll show you, there's one called Sharkers, Sharkers down there, and we could, I could also um, mention Modocha, but I have to tell you, none of what I'm drawing is really, I mean, it's a rough estimation, I'm not a map maker, uh, this is not drawn to scale, um, and even these sub-regions, Tyler, they might be debatable on how many there are and, and, and um, you know, um, uh, because it's actually morphing over time, our understanding of these regions. There's no science. Well, there's a study to it, obviously, ethnomusicology and, and, and folklore and the like. But it's not like, you know, we have concrete borders here. So just so you know, I want to mention that uh, to uh, you, Tyler, so you, uh, you're not confused when you maybe look at another type of map like this. Okay, I understand. Okay, now there are also, most of this, as I mentioned, is to the west of the Duna. But I also wanted to kind of show you um, uh, that there are, there's also some of these regions that belong in the Duna or the Danube big region that are on the other side of the river. For instance, there's a nice beautiful town called Kolocha and also up here 
there might be, there's a place, or there's a region that's called Kish Kunshad. So all of that still belongs to the Danube region, okay? Because it's the area around the Danube. I got a question, Carl. It, it's, it's Cal. Uh, Carl, what's that, the asterisk there? Well, that's a, it's kind of showing the capital um, uh, of Hungary. Do you know the capital of Hungary, Tyler? Um, is it Bu Bu Bucharest? Oh, so close. Bucharest is the capital of Romania, which is down, it's down here. That is called Budapest. And that's that big city. I wanted to show that. Again, it's a good frame of reference so we see how Budapest looks. Budapest is over there. Now, um, there's some, they're also a part of the Danube region. You might include also um, uh, certain uh, regions or mini regions or, 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 or villages that are actually perhaps, for instance, in Croatia. A place called Slavonia. Slavonia is where Hungarians live in, in today's Croatian borders. Or up here in Slovakia, Chalokers. Chalokers. Now, Tyler, did you listen to my episode uh, called Dunantuli Flyover? No, I, I tell me, I'll tell you what, Carl, I've never really listened to any of your Tansas Talk episodes. Well, oh, okay, Tyler, I'm not insulted. That's okay. I think you should maybe listen to it, um, uh, one I called Dunantuli Flyover, where I kind of talk about a lot of the music um, of, of, of the Danube region. All right? And if one of the villages I played music from is Sharkuz which is down here. I want to play you a little of that and get your reaction to it. Well, I can really party to that, Carl. I like that. I like the sound of that. Well, that's a different groove than we heard before. Well, that's right, Tyler. Good observation. Um, do you play an instrument, Tyler? Yeah, I play the guitar. Okay, well, there's no real guitar in Hungarian folk music, but there's a great, some great guitarists that play our music, including both Miklos, love him. So, uh, uh, the, the, this, this music is called the Ugros, it's the jumping dance, and it's a very, very um, old style uh, dance that's done by shepherds, and the like, oh my granddad, he was a shepherd. Cool, that's cool, I didn't know that, Tyler. Um, now, I, I do wanna ask you though, uh, Carl, the, this, why did it sound so like bad, this music? Like it's nice, but it's not that clean like the other thing you showed me from Rabokuz. Well, Tyler, this is a field recording actually, and this is how we collect um, uh, um, for 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 century for over a century now, this is what how we're able to sh uh, preserve our music because um, e experts have gone out to these villages and regions and recorded the bands from there playing the music, and that's why it's not a really clean studio recording. It's done at a party or in someone's backyard, but that's a good observation. Listen. Okay, Tyler, we're going to move on to the second big region, right? It's called the Tisa, exactly. The Tisa region is right here. And, um, and it is another, another big region. Um, and and, and um, I'll, I'll just highlight, you know, a couple of the nice uh, special sub-regions that we hear often about. Here, place called Sotmad. All right, Sotmad is up there, and next to it or below it, place called Hoidushag. And there's all kinds of different little sub regions, sub villages, um, 
and uh, uh, up here it's kind of hilly uh, mountains, a really beautiful area. Tyler, I recommend you go visit. Um, and this is actually music from Sotmar here. You can listen to it. Well, Carl, I like that, but it sounds a lot like the music from, let's say, even Rabokus that you played, you know? Um, well, that's a good observation. It, the, the, the music and dance of, of uh, inside Hungary, uh, today's border, not talking about Transylvania, but in Hungary, um, a lot of it is, is quite similar sounding and even similar looking to the average non-expert uh, eye. Um, uh, because, you know, there's the, 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 the newer tradition um, came in to Hungary from the West um, during the Renaissance. Um, and that's how the kind of the Chardash was born, this style of music we're talking about, the style of dancing. There are epi other episodes I talk about that, Tyler, so you're going to have to really catch up uh, to understand that. But, but that's a good observation that they do kind of sound um, uh, similar, um, but not always. And we'll get to an example of that shortly. But let me show you some more regions here. Palots is up here, um, and also Motyo, again, this is not where physically they're actually located, it's just a rough estimation. Palots and Motyo, and the Palots folks are great, they have uh, villages like called Bog, B-A-G. Bag? That's the name of the village, Bag? That's right, Bog, we say Bog. Um, there's a Rimots as well. Um, and the other great dancing and music up there. Uh, down here, a little to the south, a place called Yashag. Yashag is there as well. And, um, and down here, we have a very aptly named place called Dale Alfud. Alfud means the Great Plains. Or, and this is the Southern Great Plains of Hungary down here. Um, now up here in Slovakia as well, of course we're down here down the south in the Serbian region, this place called uh, Vojdošag and there's some nice Hungarian music there too and that's kind of kind of a part of the big Tisa region and up here we have a lot of cool villages including a place called Magyar Bud um, and uh, Magyar Bud is up in Slovakia today, but uh, it's a Hungarian, uh, primarily Hungarian populated uh, village. And there are some other examples of that. Now, you mentioned that the kind of music sounds the same. I want to show you something here from Delalfud, from the, the, the South Plains, that sounds quite different than what you were talking about before. Listen to this. My God, that sounds really weird. What is that thing? Well, it's called a hurdy gurdy. Kind of sounds like a bagpipe. It's uh, in Hungarian they call it the tekerő because you 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 um you crank it like this, and it's a uh, um, um you spin it tekerő, and uh, it's a very unique um, instrument that has its origins from the. Renaissance. I've also played music um, in my other episodes on this instrument, so, and um, it's a quite a quite a unique sound, right? Very different than what you were talking about before with Sotma Rabokus Chardash music. That was a Chardash too, but played on a peculiar instrument. All right, now we are going to our third and final region, which is. Probably everyone's fa favorite when it comes to Tansa's um, type of music and dance, and this is Erde or Transylvania. You got it, Tyler. Give Tyler a big hand. 
he's getting it right now. So, um, again, Transylvania is not, it's not quite the scale here, but it kind of looks like this. And I'm going to um, show you the nine. I'm going to call them nine. There's some people say they're eight, some ten. There's different ways of categorizing um, the, the sub-regions within Transylvania. And I know um, I will get some, um, some feedback on this or criticism perhaps. But I'm trying to make it as simple as possible uh, for my good friend Tyler. So he's been a great sport. So now I'm going to show these nine. So first here, I will just go, oops. Silacha. This is not always discussed when we talk about the regions, but Silacha is right close to the Hungarian border. Um, and then next is Kolotosen. Hey Carl, I got a question. It's a Kalman, but that's okay. Uh, I got a question. How about these three little uh, asterisks, or I guess they're capitals? No, no. Bucharest is the capital of Romania, and you can only have one capital in a country, I guess unless you're Israel. But anyway, what are these three? Yeah, that's another good question. So, it's a, they're just a frame of reference for me. Um, or for you guys. So this first one here, closest to the border, is called... Opa! And this pen is running out here too. This is called... Kolozsvár. Alright, and... That's the Hungarian name for this city. The next city here is called... Marosvásárhé. Okay, and I know I'm writing small, but I'll take a snapshot of this. Shepshi Saint Gerd, beautiful sounding village or city, excuse me. But these are kind of just uh, frames of reference for me. Um, and um, you know, as we're talking about Kolotoseg, I wanted to show you the music. Now, this will start sounding different to you, Tyler than the other music that we played from Hungary. Listen to this. If you listen to my episode about the famous uh, uh, violinist from Kalotaseg, Fodor Sándor Neti. Um, he was from this area, and there are some great villages here, including Suchag, where he's from, where he was from, um, Mero, uh, Inoktelke, all these uh, uh, other places. Um, and this is the type of style of music uh, you'll get there. And uh, Tyler, yeah, the dancing is also uh, quite different. Um, particularly as we start moving uh, to the east. Okay, so the th next subregion is Mezushi. All right. Now Mezushi has it could have Dale Mezushi, which is South Mezushi, or Asak Mezushi. Um, you know some of the great uh, villages uh, from from here, uh, Mezushi. Uh, Ördöngös füzes, which is north, um, Boncida, uh, Szék, um, Magyar Palatka, which is the uh, famous uh, uh, home of the Kodoba family and musicians. Um, you know, if you listen to uh, the episode called So Close Yet So Far, I, I talk a, a bit about this area, um, how the cities or villages are some of them are very geographically close like a few miles away from each other but the music and dancing is so completely different and i kind of talk more about that i think i'm gonna start listening to your episodes because what you're talking about 
really sounds interesting and I love the groovy music you're playing. Well, thank you, Tyler. That's really sweet of you. Now, the next um, subregion here is Marosh Kukulu. And a Marosh and a Kukulu are both, oops, I will circle that. They're both rivers, and that's why they call that region, that subregion, that. And you know, um, my uh, theme music at the uh, beginning of the uh, of the show, Tyler. Uh, let me see if I remember it. Exactly, Tyler. That's actually from that area, from a village called Lurinsreve. Um, and then there's also Kutoshfeld and other. Uh, I don't want to overdo the number of uh, villages I will I, or, or, or little mini mini regions within the sub regions but just I'm gonna throw you some examples so we have one two three four we've already covered and let's talk about the next one here which is again broadly speaking it's called Marosh Seik and Moros Sik is awesome. Um, it's got uh, some of the great villages like Sas Chavash, uh, the guys who, um, uh, you know, the gypsy band that played at my wedding. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yep, exactly. And uh, there's also a uh, village called Sentivany, Voido Sentivany, and we're listening to music from there. Listen to Voido Sentivany. It's quite a different style than what you heard before, right, Tyler? Yeah, I like that groove. It's a little different than the, the charred ash you were talking about. Uh, not charred ash. Uh, like burnt ashes, no, it's a chardash. Okay, whatever you say. This is the spinning dance, actually. Um, you know, it's like the fordulo, they call it in, uh, in Hungarian. You guys got some funky language, let me tell you that. Well, we do. I'm starting to lose my accent as the episode's going on, which is very interesting. Tyler's getting tired. <laughs> the next one. We'll call this broadly. Seke food, the land of the Sekes. And here you have uh, Shovideki and uh, Palpotoki and, uh, and Korond. And, and again, uh, there might be some debate on where things kind of fall, but again, this is a very broad explanation. And now, after that, I would like to show the last three, which kind of go along this part of the the, um, the, uh, the 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 border of Transylvania. So again, the rest of after you hit the border, you get you go into you know I call it regular non-Transylvania Romania. But what is that border? Well, that's the Carpathian Mountains. So there's like a big mountain range there. Oh, Tyler, that's the whole thing about this. This this mountain range starts down here it's uh, Carpathian Mountains and it goes all the way up to Poland wow man that's a big range well of course it's a humongous mountain range and it's kind of protected Hungarians over the centuries um, and, uh, and and that's one of the secrets to our uh, survival to be honest so anyway the uh, the last three regions kind of a border or go um, around or even within the mountains. For instance, here we have this called Chango. Okay, Chango. Uh, is that like uh, Django Unchained? Great movie by Tarantino? Not quite. Um, it is Chango. It's a little different. Okay, but the Changos are, are are amazing people with very very probably the oldest some of the oldest customs we have in Hungarian dance and music I want to show you a little clip from them just so you see how how different it is 
uh, from the area of uh, Gimesh. It's a valley that's been very well protected um, as it's in the mountains for centuries. And this is the type of music they play. Listen to this, Tyler. I guarantee you've never heard anything like this. What, what is that instrument? I hear the fiddle, but uh, what's the other one? Well, that's the, it's called the Ute Gordon. It's the percussive cello. And it's, uh, it, it, that instrument doesn't exist anywhere else in the world except there. The Changos in Gimesh Valley play it. Okay, two more left, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do, and then next we have, now technically this is, called Moldva, M-O-L-D-V-A. Now Moldva or Moldva, let's call it Moldva. Mold, Mold, Moldva is actually kind of outside of the, the uh, to the other side of the, of the Carpathian Mountains than Transylvania. Nevertheless, there's Hungarians living there. And um, uh, that's some of the most popular uh, type of dancing for, uh, for Hungarian at the Tanzhaz. Um, because because it's a mostly line or circle dances and everyone can join in. You don't need a partner. You can follow along and it's super fun and it's some great music. And then the last one, Tyler, drum roll is Bukovina. Bukovina. And again, similar to the Moldva experience, Bukovina is actually uh, technically outside of Transylvania, but we treat it as a part of the Transylvanian macro region. Um, so those are the nine regions. Again, I will read them again, the nine sub-regions within Transylvania. Silachag, Kolotoseg, Mezerseg, Moros Kukulö, Morosseg, Székelyföld, Csángó, Moldva, Bukovina. And the three frames of reference are Kolozsvár, which is Cluj in Romanian, Morosvásárhé, and Shepsi Szent György. That's, I think that's Svantu Gyorgi, and Morosvásárhé is Tirgu Muresh. So, there we have it. Those are the three regions. Um, and let me bring the, the whiteboard just closer so everyone can see it. Wait, I'll go like this. There we go. Like nice, not perfect, but nice. Well, that is the regions in a nutshell. And to end today's episode, I am going to play some music from the last one I talked about, which is Bukovino. And with this, I'm gonna take you guys out of this episode. I hope you found it interesting. I wanted to thank uh, Tyler for being such a good sport. Maybe we'll bring him back for another episode. Um, maybe we won't, but we'll see. But uh, thank you, Tyler. Thanks, Carl. I would like you to w learn the name uh, Kalman or Kalman or Uchi. Richie, I call you Richie. No, wrong, no. Just uh, anyway, uh, pleasure to have you on the show, Tyler. And um, I hope you listen to some of my prior episodes because there's some good instructive material that will bring all out of this a home and make a lot more sense once you kind of see it visually as I've drawn it out here. All right. So uh, thank you everyone for tuning in and for uh, for watching today's program. And sorry if you're just listening to it because um, you missed kind of the map and the visual part. But uh, you could always watch it on YouTube. Thanks again. And I'll see you next time.